Webflow has just released their new Webflow interactions powered by GSAP. And in this video, I want to show you guys this timeline that I built with my co-founder this morning and to sort of give you a first impression, first opinion about this whole new Webflow interactions panel because it is different, it is more powerful and the long requested feature by so many people in the community, which is the horizontal timeline, is finally here and it's done incredibly well. Now, I'm not gonna do some sort of deep dive and go into all of the details of the new uh, interaction panel. Um, that's not the goal of this video. So many people don't have access to it yet because Webflow is doing a gradual rollout. So I apologize if you're having major FOMO right now um, for being able to watch the video and see the clonable, but not um, build stuff yourself just yet. Um, so maybe you'll find some a little bit of joy in this video. Um, so at least you can see something. And of course the clonable in the description. If you clone it, I believe you're able to edit the animation even if you don't have full access to the new interactions by GSAP for your full account. So at least it's something to play with. Now, of course, I guess the biggest differentiator is the fact that it is powered by GSAP, which comes with a whole bunch of cool features, but also just the, the horizontal timeline and being able to scrub through your animations seeing all of the animations, so the all of the actions, which is a new term that is introduced. And an action is basically sort of a single animation, a single tween, if you're familiar with GSAB, that is plugged into your timeline. Now these actions can be reusable and that is, again, too much detail for now, but it is a very interesting system that they're setting up. Um, and if you're wondering what the colors mean, they don't mean anything just yet. <laughs> Um, they just look nice, I guess, to sort of give you the idea that it's a very dynamic timeline um, to provide some contrast. But yeah, they, they don't mean anything specific for now. Um, so what you'll notice is that all these actions, all these animations that make up this complete timeline um, target different things. So this allows you to organize your animations in a way that makes sense to you. So you can rename these um, actions. So we have Stagger Willem. Willem is a very old Dutch name, by the way. We just thought it was fun, um, which we named Stagger Willem. And what this animation does, if you look on the right side, this is also a completely new look. Um, this allows you to change the target um, of your action, change uh, the duration and easing, and of course the actual animation itself. So it's sort of those three things. Here, the new targeting. Um, previously, this actually what we're seeing here is just about what we had access to with the old Webflow interactions, right? You could select a class and then you could scope it to matching elements, children, stuff like that. There is already extra scoping uh, options available here, but what Webflow is introducing now is uh, you can target IDs, attributes, which I'm very excited about because I love using attributes to target different things, and a custom selector. And this is just any CSS that you want, which is very impressive. If you're familiar with CSS, I don't know, using child selectors, sibling selectors, stuff like that, that can all go in here, um, which is just you know about as, as custom as it can get. So I'm gonna undo that now. Um, because I had my letter selected. And what we're seeing here is probably the main thing that people will have to get used to, which is the fact that GSAP can animate an element from a position, it can animate something to a position, and it can do that those things combined a from to tween. Basically, that's the three main things that I'll, I think you'll be using most. And a from is basically uh, the same as setting an initial state with the old Webflow interactions. So this is saying, okay, we're gonna move these letters from a Y percent of 100 to a Y percent of zero. That's it. So it may look a bit new, but that's just what you'll have to get used to. And that takes 1.25 seconds over an ease of Expo in out, which I think is one of the coolest, like smoothest looking ones from GSET themselves. And now a very, very, very often requested feature is the ability to stagger stuff. If you've ever had to build a stagger animation in Webflow, you'll know that it is tedious. <laughs> you would either have to use the direct element selectors and space them out yourselves, 
or you'd have to add combo classes of is one, is two, is three, and then stagger those things. Um, but it's just so much extra work. GSAP has that all built in. Um, so you'll see that I'm selecting all the letters. So we've already pre-split these letters. Um, so all these letters are separate spans. And now I can just say that uh, I want to stagger these with a 0.025 second stagger delay between each letter. So that's just every letter has that delay between them, um, allowing for that sort of staircase effect, which just adds a bit of extra dynamic feel to such an animation. You could switch it to a total time. If you're like, okay, I want to stagger all these letters over the duration of one second, and then it'll just calculate the offset for you. Um, and we see, by the way, as I'm making these changes, the timeline stuff here is changing as well. So you can, again, visually see how it's impacting your overall timeline feel. If you're more of a visual person rather than exact science with numbers, you could just drag these out, move them on the timeline, and now you're setting delays and durations all at once, and you see that all the live numbers here are changing as well. So I'm gonna undo that. Other cool features of Stagger, which I think you'll enjoy to explore yourselves as well, is that we can control from which um, element the GSAP will start staggering. So the default is start, but you can also make it start from the last letter in the word. You see, so now it comes from the right to the left. Uh, we can do random, which will make a more playful effect. Um, but yeah, I think these will point themselves out. You should play with it, it's fun. So then there is a bunch of other actions on this timeline, one which we called Growbox, Growbox Inner, Willem Left, Willem Right. And these are just, you know, all different actions happening on the timeline to make this animation happen. So we've split the WIL in a separate uh, uh, wrapper, which we called Willem H1 Start. And that element is being moved from zero to a position of negative 0.05 EM, which is just a little extra nudge um, to create some extra spacing between the letter and the image, you know, just some fine tuning things. But the grow box here growing from zero to one EM and the inner of that sort of growing box growing from zero to a hundred percent in here to create this effect. Next, we are animating all of our cover images. So there is a bunch of images stacked on top of each other in that div, just absolutely positioned on top of each other and we're animating them from an opacity of 100 to 0. And for this one, we're using the offset time um, to stagger them 0.5 seconds after each other. So you'll see that it'll automatically cycle between them before we start the growing thing. The growing is, again, some tweens, um, some actions on the timeline, um, sizing them on the width and the height to 100 VW and 100 VH, and the inner wrapper from the 1 EM thing to 110 VW to create a bit of parallax effect. And then here we have the staggering of these elements and you see that we have pre-split them using a custom element that would not have been necessary. We could have just put in like a, an H1 and then use the new split text function. So I could, for example, quickly do that on the projects link here. So if I would add a new action, which is going to look horrible, but just to show you guys how this process would be, we see that I'm now adding a new action here, which is called custom. I could rename it, and we could say projects navlink test. All right, and I want this thing to happen sort of about where all the other items are done. Then I want to do something with the project thing thing is that now I can select split text and split by letter and I can wrap each letter in a div with overflow hidden so that we can get a masking effect. First I'll show you without and then I'll show at the mask to show uh, the impact of this. Impact sounds serious but what we're going to do is that we're going to animate from, um, not actually just do a two tween, only two, an opacity of zero and perhaps a move Y of 100%. So what I want to do is that I want to move all the letters, I want to fade them to the bottom, which again doesn't make sense, but just for the purpose of showing you how this works. I don't need an X move, I don't need a scale, 
and then I want to stagger every letter with a 0.1 second delay. And let's start at the end. Nice. Um, and then I just want to use a, we'll do a 0.5 duration and a nice elastic. No, elastic is going to look horrible. We'll do, where is it? The expo out, in out. I'm fine tuning for a sake of an example, which doesn't make sense. But cool thing is now I don't have to play the full animation. I can just start here and admire my letters animating. And you see, I actually made a mistake, which I could have noticed by the stagger duration becoming this long, because I'm like, okay, it's only like seven letters. Why is it going to take this long? That is because my current class selector is now all underlying link elements. So it's targeting all these things which share the same class. What we could do is that we could go back into the styling with that element selected and either give it an ID, we could say test, head back to the interaction using this new button and then select that action. I want to show my timeline. I want to zoom out by just using my trackpad and then I want to find this thing and I want to say, okay, the idea of test. And now I see that my duration has drastically shortened, so it makes sense because it's only seven letters. And now, if I play that again from there, I see that I'm only targeting that element. So you're noticing that the workflow of creating your animations is changing quite a lot, but I think once we are all getting used to this, this is actually going to be super powerful. And even for me, I'm used to coding all the animations for my client work. So I code a lot. I have like thousands of rules of um, mostly GSAP and JavaScript code on a typical client project. Um, and I actually think that I'm gonna start using this visual timeline editor quite a lot, just because it's, it's nice, you know? We're already building inside of a visual canvas. So having the ability to create your animations in here and just play around with the timeline and tweak everything really nicely. I just, I just really enjoy this process. Um, even after maybe a slightly steeper learning curve compared to being very familiar with code. Um, but especially if you're not, I think this is a really nice intro into the world of GSAP and perhaps actually going to allow you to move away from the visual editor back to real GSAP code, you know, if you need specific things that are not available in this visual editor. Because GSAP is a lot larger and a lot more complex and capable than what is being shown right now in this um, Webflow Interactions version. I know the Webflow team is working on a whole bunch of new functionalities and it's going to get even better than this. Um, but I do think that they will never be able to do all of the GSAP options inside of Webflow just because it would just become so huge. Um, but yeah, that's definitely not me advocating for you guys to start coding um, just do what you want. Just giving you guys my honest opinion. Um, anyways, I'm not going to make this video too long. This animation, this thing, is available as a Webflow clone. Link in the description. Um, take it, use it, do what you want with it, and have fun with it. And um, I'm honestly really excited for this. This is really great um, progress in our industry. And I'm just happy that more people can start experiencing the power and fun of animating with GSAP. So I'm sure I'm going to be making more videos about this. If so, I'll hope to see you in the next ones. Cheers, guys.